what, well, you know what? I know you build your own Kenyan chassis. Mm -hmm. Did you, you, you didn't just start with, we you know, with scratch with a bucket of bolts. I mean, did no, you take bought, a chassis and then tweak it and make it your own? We bought a bunch of Edmund cars. That's what we started with in oh, 70, 60, uh, 65. Mm -hmm. And, uh, A.J. Foyt drove for us in New Zealand, Australia, and uh, we took our two Canyon cars mm -hmm. over there, and we kind of <laughs> blew them all away. Man, I managed to win in 23 out of the 26 race cars. <laughs> wow. Races over there in New Zealand, Australia. And Foyt won one. In fact, I looked at him in my mirror to see where he was and ran into the wall at Liverpool, Australia, and gathered it up, and he'd already went by me, and I finished on his rear bumper, but that's what the people wanted to see. A.J. Foyt won a race. <laughs> of course. A four-time Indy 500 winner. How, do you have any idea how many Kenyan chassis you've built over the years? It, well, we built 35 of this variety for yeah, for indoors, or for uh, the motorcycle motors, but uh, so well, a chassis is around 400 chassis from Indy cars, sprint cars, and dirt cars, and, and midgets and go-karts. <laughs> wow. Three-quarter midgets, too. What do you think open-wheel racing today is doing right, or... First thing they're doing wrong is... <laughs> I, mean, I was going there. All these expensive motors in. My motor, okay, <clears throat> a Volkswagen motor cost 5,000 bucks. <laughs> and everybody in the country had Volkswagen motors, and I was sometimes 10 motors behind overhauling for people. But then the next thing that came along was the uh, inline Gertie, uh, sorry, uh, Sesco, mm -hmm. which we had also, and uh, that was the beginning. And then the Gertie came along, and then the, the uh, Mopar, and then the Toyota. And Toyota really killed us. Uh, there's an Esslinger, too, sorry. Yep. <clears throat> and that was a good motor, and that was the, the motor to beat. And, uh, and then Toyota came along with theirs, a 385 horse. And uh, I could, because of the torque of that thing, I could beat them all on the short tracks. We come to 5.8 ORP. Winchester, Salem, Eldora. I was looking at third, probably fifth place back <laughs> because I didn't have the horsepower. But I didn't want to spend another 20,000 bucks to get 20 more horse, so. Wow, is there anything else open wheel racing is doing wrong besides, you know, outpricing motors? Uh, like USAC runs a 12 inch right rear tire on a 10 inch wheel, wrong, because it crowns the tire. And our, our little, uh, our little tires made for a 10 inch wheel, we blow them away, but they don't want to switch. They make you buy the big tire. The tire cost and the engine cost, uh, $65,000 for a Toyota motor. Oh my God. And every eight to 10, three, every eight, uh, sorry, six to eight races, you got to overhaul it for eight to 10,000 bucks. Oh my God. <laughs> and my Gertie motor, I got 394 features on that motor, and I take it apart every 20 races and look at it, put most of it back together. But it's a good old motor, and it's still the original, what, second dirty motor built, and uh, it's still what, with us. What has your relationship been with USAC over the decades? Good, bad, somewhere in between, healthy? They sponsored us when we first started with our Canyon cars. Yep. And then they said, uh, uh, we don't watch you anymore, and so that's when Don started promoting his own races. How much has your brother Don contributed to your success? Would would Mel Kenyon be the brand he is today without your brother? No, because we worked on all these cars. To, Don's a great, fantastic welder. He bent the cars all up and welded them all together, and then I adjusted them all and put them on the racetrack. So it's kind of a six to one, half to the other. But uh, uh, we've been out here, well, since 69, steady, and we were together since, uh, 65. Have you guys gotten along well? I mean, it's not yeah. like you're, you, I get it, you're brothers and you love each other, but, but, I mean, the time you spend with each other is off the charts, but... We have, argue with each other, have differences of opinion, but we get along. Yeah, but you get along. But again, you know, we should have done something my way, and we didn't. Or we should have done it your way, and we didn't. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> what about your dad, Everett? What? Well, he was with us for, um, they moved here in 72, the third house over here, mobile home. And uh, mom 
had dementia on her way back from Florida where they wintered everywhere every year. And so she made it to, to the hospital in Atlanta. And she didn't want to get all hooked up and everything, stay hooked up to, to keep functioning. So she unplugged herself. When they found her, she was 98% brain dead. And so after the third recheck and she hadn't improved any, we told him to unhook her and so she died. And so dad then, he did a, was a refrigeration expert and did re air conditioning refrigeration as a business for Central Electric in Davenport, Iowa. And uh, he took care of all of our refrigeration units and our homes and so forth here. And he worked with us in the shop and they, they traveled to all of our races all around the country and <laughs> our best supporters. And then when dad, we were going to Toledo, Ohio and we just got about 12 miles from Toledo. My hometown. When we got a phone call that your dad just got T-boned at an intersection over here at 25 and, and uh, 250, 250 and, and 39. And he died. And so, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, when was that? 1999. Really? But Boy, your, your story is <laughs> up, down, all around, and incredible. We, we all have but, our time on this earth, and we don't know how long it's going to be. No, I know. But you have been dealt, you know, s serious adversity over the decades, years, and have man. You're inspiring. That's what you are. You are to me. Well, we You're an inspiring to story. We talked for Billy Graham and Tom Landry and anybody around wanted to hear our conversation in the churches and youth groups and so forth all over the country, New Zealand, Australia. And, uh, and so they got to hear my message. But maybe I talk too much about myself and not about the Lord, so. No, you're the best story in town. That's what people want to hear. What? Back in your heyday, when you were winning championships and winning races every weekend, who, who was maybe the, if you could pick one or two toughest competitors you ever raced against? Oh, Rich Vogler, of course. Oh, good choice. And uh, he was coming on me strong for wins, but he died first mm -hmm. in USAC. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and we, again, he was over in Australia and New Zealand for years too, and we got to run and get together over there as well. I've been overseas 24 years in New Zealand, Australia. <laughs> And of course, when Floyd drove for us over there, we got to go with my wife and kids too. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, that was that was good. Did you get along well with AJ? Yeah, we got along with him fine. In fact, he says after our trip over there in '75, he said, "I want you to drive my my second Indy car to Speedway next year, '76." Um, <laughs> I planned for that. Come time, come time, come time, and I kept asking him. He said, "Well, he says I decided to just run me this year." <laughs> Oh no. And so I didn't get a chance. Uh, was was he one of the best of the best in your opinion, AJ Foyt from uh, that era? Mario. Mario. <clears throat> he ran he won races for us. Did you get along well with Mario? Not really. No. Who was the better racer, AJ or Mario? AJ. You, really? Cuz uh, he ran everything and well, Mario ran everything too, but uh, uh, AJ was more consistent. And everything where Mario wasn't really. I, well, I thought it was interesting. You went in the Hall of Fame, which happens at the end of your career in '84. Uh, I think, and then in '85, you turned around and won a championship. It's supposed to work the other way around. Well, we, uh, yeah, you, you were supposed to be retired, but not necessarily so. <laughs> Apparently, do you pay attention to NASCAR? You well, watch it? I watch it every time they run a race because we have a race of our friends still doing it. Like, sure. Uh, Did you have a favorite racetrack over the years? Anyone that I could win at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good well, answer. Speed room, I think I have 15 wins at the speed room, and I think, wow. I, got, I, think I got 15 at IRP too, so. We won 18 races in one year, that's the most we won. And then darn if Billy Bolt didn't win 19 in California. Well, so. doggone it. <laughs> did you ever have any interests outside of racing? You never had time for anything else, did you? I flew airplanes. I got my. Did you really? I got my license in California in '64. I didn't know that. <laughs> in fact, we used to come back this way from from California to here for the summer with uh, four or five aircraft, and then we had to fly them back in the winter, in the fall, and uh, learned how to fly over there and got my license in '64. <laughs> but uh, I flew 
until 85. Uh, I see. That's, <laughs> that's really neat. I didn't know that. That's a chunk I didn't know about you. I'll bet when you were driving rear engine Indy cars back in the 60s and 70s, though, they were, you know, I got to believe they're a little harder to drive because today's Indy cars are less downforce rockets and they just, you just point them and they plant. And then in the rear engine cars, you, you were sitting about like a midget, then about like a midget in front of you. Sure. Not behind you. Yeah. And uh, you had to keep the car under you. In fact, when I finished third there at Indy, in 68, the city of Lebanon sponsored us. <laughs> and uh, you had to keep the car under you and go as fast as you could through the corners. The rear engine cars handled so well and go through the corners so fast, they were still, you still had to keep it under you. Now with the ground effects of the race cars and uh, they had to cut the engine because the, they were getting such good mileage, they had to shrink the fuel tanks. They started out at 65 gallon and then they were down to 30 gallon. Now they think they're down to 20, 22 gallon, something like that. And the mileage is so good, and they have to stop so often to get fuel, they might as well change tires. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it's expensive to own, let alone run, an Indy car nowadays. Of course. Well, it's, now it's how heavy your billfold is, and with minimum experience, you can get up and go fast. I won't say minimum, but okay. You still got to have experience, but it isn't what you used to have to have. They used to pay us to drive an Indy car. Now you have to bring money to drive an Indy car. Yeah, well, the drivers today don't really work on their cars like they did back in your day, do they? No, they don't. No. It's just like uh, these guys, <laughs> our, our guys now, these young kids, you can start when you're 12 years old in our cars. But uh, as soon as they get out of the race cars, they go over and sit down in their chairs and get their phones out. Playing <laughs> <laughs> with their phones. Oh, God. And, uh, Boy, the world changed. Oh, I gotta get back in the car. It's time to get back. Yeah, go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, get in there, kid. That's what we're here for. Yeah. You know, uh, real quickly, I drove through the, I've never been to Lebanon, and I drove through downtown in the square. I know they recently renovated the area around it. Lebanon is a super nice little town, clean. I, I really, really liked it. You see all the bricks? Yeah, yeah, that was neat. I, I bet Lebanon's been good to you over the years, hasn't it? Well, they have. In fact, uh, when they sponsored us, uh, like Lindsey Hopkins says, here's the race car, but you got to come up with your sponsor to run it and maintain it. And uh, and so I, I went to Lebanon and asked them if they were interested in sponsoring it, and they, they did from yeah, donations, everybody from paper boys to milkmen to mail carriers to... To run the Indy 500. Yeah. That's a cool story. And, uh, and then to finish... Uh, third. Wow. Behind Dan Gurney and Bobby Unser, that was pretty good too. That's awesome. 1968. Yep. Back in the shop. Just like with this little hand, I can still play handball, I still do push ups. Are you kidding me? You still do push ups? No, I, I, in fact, depends how busy I am out here as to how much I take care of myself. So here's just some of the midgets you're taking care of. You're not looking at naked girls, are you? Yes, I am. Oh, good for you. I was hoping you were. <laughs> good, good for you. Okay. Thanks for having me, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is this guy a legend or what? Mel Kenyon. I mean... That's it? Yeah, that's straight now. Okay. How many near 90-year-old men can get down on their knees on a cement floor? I don't think too many. I don't think so either. <laughs> You're in a special group on that. Hey, you want me to pick that up for you? Yeah. No. You don't need my help. You're amazing. That's Ryan Newman. Ryan Newman up there? Yeah. Ooh, and that's autographed by Ryan Newman. Oh, yeah. You know him pretty well, don't you? Yeah, he's a, he's a neat guy, isn't he? He started with us in the midgets. He had one of his own, but didn't do well, and then started with us in the midgets to win the national championship. Gosh. And okay. Mario drove for us at the Astrodome. Astrodome, the Mario. Car. I drove the new one with the cage, first car with a cage on it. Gosh. <laughs> we you had the first car in the country with a cage on a race car, as well wow. as uh, one across the nose. And of course, Linda.
Linda Vaughn yeah, she... to the real champ. <laughs> <laughs> What's that say? I love you, Mel. God bless Linda Vaughn, 1995. What'd you say? You called that Herbie? Herbie is first one we built. First one? First Kenyan chassis? Yep. Is that an Offenhauser? Yep. Oh, man. Noth there was never a sweeter sound in motor than an Offenhauser. <laughs> God, they yeah. sounded so sweet. You had to look at them every 10 years. So you, that was your first Kenyan chassis. Yeah. You and Don built that car. Yeah. That is a pretty little <laughs> race car. A torch and, and a stick arc. Where's that track at? Well, that's in uh, Columbus, Ohio. Really? I didn't realize Columbus, Ohio. Oh, that's a fairgrounds. fairgrounds yeah. Oh, wow. That is a cool shot. I love it. Oh, sweet. That's your first cage car in Australia. And, but that's the first cage there in 69. First cage in 69? Yep, and that's at the Acidone. I roller skated a lot. In fact, that's where I met my wife, roller skating from Brian. But you used to roller skate? Yeah. <laughs> I can dance on skates, I can't on the floor. <laughs> that, I bought that car from Foyt, went to Daytona, had fast time, first time there, and finished fifth in his first 500 race. I'm sorry, Terry Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You ran an Indy car at the, at the brickyard with a cage on it? Yeah. In 74? We couldn't get it going, couldn't get it going. Thinking it was our corner speed, corner speed here. Corner speed was as fast as fast time. We took the cage off and went eight mile an hour faster. Wow. That's the way. Wait a minute, you got invited to the White House? Yeah. When was that? Uh, like back in the 80s? When Nixon was there. Nixon? Yeah. Wow. Sale. There's Richard Nixon right there. Yep. There's four presidents Reagan, Nixon, Reagan, Bush, Bush, and Ford. And Ford, yep. Got to meet all and, of them. And you got time. to meet all those guys? Yep, Reagan turned out, if Reagan was a racetrack announcer before he became a movie star. So you, how did you receive an invitation to, to go to the White House? Does that come in the mail? Do they call you on the phone? No, I was supposed to represent Indiana. Uh-huh. Uh, we didn't finish. You know what? We mentioned all your championships. What we didn't mention is your, th your three-time Neymar's yeah. national midget champion, yeah. which was a tough little division back in its day. Yeah, that's actually some of the... 394 featured wins that we won, so... How, how many hours a week do you put in out here? <laughs> we used to spend 14, 16 hours a day, and now we're down to seven, maybe. Really? Wow. That's still a lot. Seven to eight. Yeah. Do you ever itch to get back behind the wheel? I mean, that's... All the time. All, really? You still have that itch? If you guys are inside the house at night with the television on, what are you usually watching? <laughs> Jeopardy. And Jeopardy. All right. That's my favorite show. Oh, Burn to Life. Man. And the second book. How many? Three. Three, three books out on Mel Kenyon? Two printings of that. Wow. That's John Carcone over the top of me. I remember Steve that. Farm in there. The Atlanta Falcons sponsored you? 73, yeah. 73 at the Brickyard? Mm -hmm. Wow. That's neat. What's that helmet? That's the last open face helmet that when I won. Um, so 18 features that year. What year was that? 68. 68, when that was the last year you wore the open face helmet. Yep, 69, I had full face. Wow. That's a classic piece there. 18 feature wins with the open face helmet. This is that clay sculpture she did. That's a clay sculpture? Mm -hmm. Who did that? Marianne. Really? Wow. That's fascinating. That's a, quite the likeness, too. Yeah, really. That's really good. Oh, that's it. Can I, can I get a look at that? Wow. The, you guys invented this, right? Or, yeah, Brother Don and I. Brother Don and I. Or Don and, and you. And Dad, yeah. <laughs> and Dad Everett. And that's... How long did you wear this particular version? Oh, that's the only version we had. Okay, so this didn't evolve over the years, no, right? No. It went on the steering wheel. So you put this glove on. Mm -hmm. And it had a fireproof glove over it. And then you, the, 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 the pin went inside the hole, right? And the bushing. The bushing. And, and then how did it clip to the wheel? It, it hose clamped to the wheel. Hose clamped to the wheel. Wow. Well, could you detach from it easily? I mean, you could pull just, it right out, didn't you? Just like you? that. I mean, if you had to abandon the steering wheel, you could get away from it, right? Yeah. Because you don't want to get tied to the wheel. No, it has a little bit of snugness to it, so. Wow. And that's what you wore all that's those years. Wore, yeah. Wow. That, I gotta, I'm gonna hold that.
That is the 65. glove that fit over your hand so you could attach yourself to the steering wheel. And with this glove, you won uh, nine more track uh, had, national championships. We had 12 wins before the fire and 394 after all the total. And, and two championships before the fire and nine afterwards, not to mention the four top fives in the Indianapolis 500. Wow. And that's how you attached yourself to the steering wheel. That's amazing. That's an amazing story. You should, this should, we should make a, this should be a motion picture that goes on your nearest cinema screen. That's a museum piece. Yeah, and then I still got this one. And I still got one in the helmet bag. <laughs>